Hey everyone, Wolf Lord Row here. Today we're discussing the legacy of Ragnar Blackmane, how he slew the infamous Gazkol Fracker. General spoiler warning to begin as the events we're discussing today are from across the Warhammer 40k universe, so you have been warned. But with that said, let's just jump straight in. When it comes to legendary reputations, the Space Wolves are certainly spoiled for choice. It's in the very nature of the Sons of Rus to seek adventure, to carve their name into the stars, to live eternally alongside the great names of their history. Of the present day Sons of Rus, for all the greatness of the Great Wolf Logan Grimnar, there can be little debate that it's Ragnar Blackmane who carries the touch of destiny. The youngest wolf lord in the chapter's history, Ragnar commands a great company rivaling the great wolf's own in size. The lightning planetary assaults of the Blackmanes are famous far beyond the territory of Fenris. It is with him the future of the chapter must undoubtedly lie. Now Ragnar is in truth one of those few characters within the universe we've actually been lucky to see a lot of over the years. From the earliest days of second edition, when he was still a blonde, Ragnar was the face of the chapter. Even then his glorious saga was being written. As the hobby developed into full-on novels, Ragnar received his own series, showing us the realities of the myths we'd always known, showing us Ragnar's story from the very beginning, before his recruitment into the chapter and his ultimate rise to a wolf lord. If you've never read any of the Ragnar Blackmain stories, I cannot recommend them enough. There's two omnibuses out there following Ragnar's story, and while yes they are older reads now, a great story for me never goes out of date. They of course have more of a space wolf character and flavour than your standard Ultramarines omnibus for example, but getting to see Ragnar's evolution as a character is really second to none. Now by far and away Ragnar's biggest achievement of recent years is his slaying of Gazkol Fracker. This came about from the prophecy of the wolf event a few years ago. A space wolf against orcs box set delivering brand spanking new Ragnar and Gazkol models. The conflict in particular was based upon an imperial world across the Great Rift a world known as Krongar, within Imperium Nihilus. Cut off from assistance with the eruption of the Great Rift, the people of Krongar were left to defend themselves against the Orc menace. The invasion force of the Greenskins wasted no time overwhelming the planet. They were of course commanded by the infamous Gazkol Fracker, and despite the human population being swiftly defeated, the countless teeming hordes of the Orcs continue to swell into the system. The Orc forces gathering in the Scarscale subsector simply wouldn't end. And this is where the Space Wolves would come in. With forces scattered around the subsector, the Wolves of Fenris fought to turn back the tide of the Xenos, intercepting arriving fleets and fending off fresh invasion attempts. However, in being shown a prophecy of a Blackmane Wolf facing down the Greenskin Beast, Ragnar Blackmane eventually found his way to Krongar, and thus Gazkol Fracker. Now the prophecy of the Wolf campaign told us that Ragnar was only accompanied by a small force of his men, on a single ship known as Fox Spear, as he'd split his great company over previous months to handle the many battles they had to fight. The last the rest of Ragnar's company had heard of him 
was an astropathic communication of Ragnar launching his hunt. That he'd found his quarry upon Krongar, and now the time had come. And so the race began for his men to reach the system in time to aid their lord in battle. Now in the system being located across the Great Rift, as we know warp travel is chaotic at best. No pun intended. And it ended up taking weeks for Ragnar's reinforcements to arrive. When they did, they found the Fox Spear surrounded by enemy vessels, still somehow valiantly fighting back. Its crew's final action was to transmit the coordinates of Ragnar's drop assault, before finally erupting in an almighty explosion. They had held out just long enough to give their Wolf Lord a fighting chance. The reinforcements wasted no time in battering their way into orbit, launching a full-scale drop assault at the location given. What they found upon the surface was Armageddon. Hundreds upon hundreds of slain orcs left their path, all heading towards a great cathedral in the hive. There, amid the dead of Space Wolf and Orc alike, they found the not-moving body of Ragnar. Now it tells us he was missing an arm, his neck was broken, and his armour was catered in holes. However, he had decapitated and slain the infamous Gazkol Fracker. As we know from the aftermath of this battle, Ragnar would be saved by the Rubicon Primaris, undergoing the procedure to be elevated to a Primaris Marine. And Gazkol himself would be reborn and resurrected by the mad Doc Grotznik. I guess you could call it a draw. However, for me, in my biased opinion, it was definitely a more defining event for Ragnar beheading the greatest orc threat in the galaxy, the orc said to be the reborn beast. Achieving that before even reaching chapter master status, and not even being a primaris himself, for me that is definitely saying something. Now, for all this prophecy of the wolf event however, the actual particulars of the event were teasingly missing. One would assume Ragnar decapitated Gazkol before succumbing to his own wounds, but the fact was we didn't really know for sure. Now, thankfully since then, we have received a little more information. Within the current Space Wolves Codex, we're given a brief line relaying how Ragnar himself describes the contest. As Blackmane tells it, he was close to death, when in his final strength, and with a howl of rage, he took Gazkol's head clean off, before the Wolf Lord himself collapsed. Not exactly a great deal of information to be sure, but at least enough to confirm the expected turn of events. However, again, thankfully that wouldn't be all, as with Gazkol's own novel, Gazkol Fracker, Prophet of the War, we got to see another description of that final encounter, and this one from the Greenskin perspective no less. How Gazkol's eternal companion Makari saw the conflict play out. Now here, Makari describes the two titans circling each other, and that Ragnar has slashed the hydraulic feeds of Gazkol's armour. Despite this, however, Gazkol is still able to move at frightening speed, and the two leap at each other, with Ragnar unleashing Bolter Fire into Gazkol's face. As they come together, Gazkol clamps his claw around Ragnar's torso, squeezing against his armour. Ragnar, for his part though, had driven his chainsword Frostfang into Gazkol's neck. As Ragnar's armour finally gives way with an almighty crack, blood pouring out of him, 
His blade frost fang finally churns through the ridiculously thick muscle and hide of Gazkol's neck, cutting through his spine. The last thing that Makari would see is Gazkol's body on the floor and a very shaky Ragnar standing above him, his armour shattered, holding Gazkol's severed head aloft. Again, this description fairly similar to what we'd heard previously, but with a few notable differences. Firstly, wielding his bolt pistol and frostfang, it appears Ragnar didn't lose an arm as originally described. Now, perhaps it could have been taken by the claw at the end, and it just wasn't mentioned. However, that does seem a little doubtful. You would have thought Makari would have described the Wolf Lord losing an arm. Secondly, it could be said, Ragnar's own tale is a typical Space Wolf recollection and retelling, as it doesn't really come across as one big final swing as Ragnar would describe it but hey, we'll give him the benefit of the doubt. For me, I really wish we got to see more of this event truly fleshed out, that we had got to see it all entirely within its own novel, beginning with Ragnar receiving the prophecy, fully following his epic journey through to reaching Krongar, descending to the surface and fighting his way into the Cathedrum, a truly epic Space Wolf saga in its own right. Now, yes, it was all included within the Psychic Awakening campaign. However, something as epic as this, it's a real shame we didn't get to see a novel dedicated to it. That image of a completely battered, exhausted and dying Ragnar, standing atop of Gazkol holding his head up high. Man, that could have been absolutely iconic. Again, for me, I know it's technically a draw, but that absolutely goes down as a Ragnar win for me. It absolutely has to be the most defining image of his legacy thus far. And in truth, it's a legacy that is still within its earliest days of being written. Now, having crossed the Rubicon, I really think you have to consider Ragnar amongst the very deadliest fighters within the galaxy at the very least within the Astartes. I really hope we get to see some more Ragnar stories come in the future, ones that cover this event in detail. A continuation to those great omnibuses I said earlier, telling us the full tale of Ragnar Blackmane's saga. He really just typifies the character that makes the Space Wolves such a fun and great chapter the characters that stole my heart as a kid. And really, the saga of this great wolf in waiting is truly still yet to be told. But as always, everyone, what do you think? What do you think of the legend of Ragnar Blackmane? How do you feel about his duel with Gazkol? Were you surprised he beheaded the Great Orc before even crossing the Rubicon? And what do you feel he could achieve now, since being elevated to Primaris? Is Ragnar one of the deadliest fighters bestriding the stars? And what other Astartes would you put up against him? Will we ever get to see Ragnar elevated to Great Wolf status? Will we ever see the end of Grimnar? As much as I love Ragnar, I hope we don't. For me, the loss of other legendary characters, those great chapter masters out there, would truly be a shame. As always, leave your thoughts in the comments below, I love to read them. Huge thank you to all my subscribers, your support truly means a lot to me, it really does. If you're new, please consider subscribing to help the channel grow. And if you enjoyed this particular vid, then why not drop a like on it too. With that said, I am off and I'll see you all again real soon.